at doing it. But God reveals things to me even before you do it. And, and, and that's something folk don't understand that God didn't put a pastor in the church for nothing. He works through the pastor. Yes, he does. And there are some things just not going to happen aside from the pastor. That's right. You're going to make a lie to God. Amen. <laughs> you ain't going to do it. And if that's just the way it is. Yes. I, I, you know, he up there bragging. No, I ain't bragging about nothing. I, if, if I could, I'd give you this right quick. <laughs> I'll give it to you quicker than you would want it, I promise you. Yes. Reach Pastor. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. I think it's small enough we can all just read it together. Can y'all see that on the screen? Yes. Let's go. Well, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Verse 8. Unto me whom less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ unsearchable riches of Christ. I want to talk for a few minutes from the thought. Are you equipped for service? Are you equipped for service? You do know that we are living in a dehumanizing age. We're living in a theological age, scientific age. Amen. A depersonalizing age where they have exalted machines, machinery above the human factor. Y'all know that, right? But uh, I want you to know that there are some things the machines will never be able to do. That's right. That God made man for a purpose. And there's some things only the man will be able to do. When I say man, I mean ge generically speaking, men and women. Yeah. God has made it so. Uh, but what I really want to know is, are you equipped for service? Not just from, you know, the physical perspective, but the human perspective. In that this is more Day Weekend, where our focus is on militarism. Uh, uh, before you can serve effectively as a military person in the Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, and Air Force, you've got to be equipped. Yeah. They're going to send you on the battlefield half equipped. They're going to make sure you got what you need before you go into military service. Yeah. Am I right, somebody? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, they're going to make sure you're well equipped to do what the military is supposed to do. And guess what? When you sign up for service, even though there's an expectation of you from the military, you don't have to worry about none of your physical needs. That's right. They give you three squares. Every day. Every day. You don't have to worry about what you're going to wear. That's right. Every day they got you clothes. They got what you need. Shoes on your feet. They got you covered. I used to have a real problem with them wool socks. Oh, <laughs> Stand I, I had I went, they had certain socks to go with certain shoes, uh -huh. and uh, you know, with Sunday dress and all that kind of stuff. And you supposed to wear your wool socks with your programs or whatever. I'd wear my Sunday socks with my programs. <laughs> I couldn't stand them wool socks. But everything you needed in terms of clothing, they had you covered. Yeah. Food, 
covered. Shout to covered in church. Covered. Whatever you need will come. Listen, if man got sense enough to do that for his army, God's got us covered. We need to make sure we equip for the service. And I want you to know the text today reveals to us the fact that when Paul went into service for God, he went in 100%, but he was well equipped to do what God had called him to do. Are y'all going to pray for me? Y'all pray I'm going to have to work so hard up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so here, here Paul is in the text talking to us about how God uses him in service. Yeah, yeah. yeah he talks to us about that. And, and if we look at the life of Paul as was directed by Christ, I believe we can learn something from this text. Amen. Yeah. I do believe that yeah. we can. He, he, he tells us about, about Jesus. Christ, how he informs us that there was more yet to be said about Jesus even after he res was resurrected from the grave. Well. And he says that, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, Christ was seen by Cephas, and he was seen by the 12, and he was see received, uh, seen by 500 men at once. All this is after he was resurrected Amen. from the dead. Amen. Paul said, there's something else I need to say about the life of Christ. And then he said he was seen by the, by the, all, the 12 apostles. Yeah. 12 mm -hmm. apostles. 12 apostles. I said 12. Yeah. All these folks around there talking about the apostles. Bible talks about 12. Amen. I got in a big debate with someone about it not too long ago. Yeah, I got, no, 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 no. I said, now listen, when you get to heaven, the Bible said there are 12 stones yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, for the apostles. Where yeah. your stone going to be? Yeah. <laughs> all, this, all this erroneous doctrine yeah. Yeah. that is flooding our world today. You better know the book. Yes, sir. Twelve apostles. Amen. Amen. But now, 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 Paul tells us, he says, Paul, and, and this is Paul talking about his own ministry and his own servanthood. He said, I know in whom I have believed. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed to him Amen. against that day. Paul said, whatever God gives you to do, he's going to equip you and give you whatever you need to do what he's called you to do. You don't have to worry about it. And people always talk about, well, I, I don't think I can do that. Well, did God call you to do it? <laughs> if God didn't call you to do it, you don't need to be in there doing it. That's right. Amen. Because you're on your own. Help me somebody. Amen. Yeah, Paul said, I know him. I believe and I know he's able to commit it against that day. I don't know about you, but when I talk about equipped for the service, I'm on the battlefield mm -hmm. for the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And I promised him that I would serve him yeah. until I till die. I die. Yeah. I'm on the battlefield. Yeah. When you equip for service, you try as much as possible to comply with the word of God. Amen. I know, I know I'm not in, in a lot of, lot of uh, popularity when I say that. Folk don't care nothing about God's word no more. Yeah. They don't care nothing about the man. I mean, you know, it's like it don't mean nothing. I ain't talking about the world. I'm talking about up in here, up in here. Folk don't care nothing about what God says in his word. They just go on and do their thing. Mm, but you better hear me. A reckoning day is coming. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. It's coming. When you equip for service, not only are you seeking to do the will of God, but you trying to rely on the power of God. Yeah. I, 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 
so I'm so grateful for Larry Jackson. You know, I, I, I just believe God brought us two together. Listen to what I'm saying. I believe right. God brought us together because he and I had the first name. We have the same first names. We had the same second names. We had the same salvation experience. All right. And when he talks, it's always like my words coming out of his mouth. Mm. Honestly. But in Sunday school this morning, he was talking about how he had knew he had to depend on God's power All right. yes. to get to where he needed to be. All right. mm -hmm. you, you, you can't serve God in your own strength. Yes. That's right. You can't overcome your habits and all that stuff in your own strength. Yes. Yes. Now, I know some people think they can, but it doesn't happen to any lasting effect or end. All right. mm -hmm. You can't deviate from God's word and expect you're going to have success. Amen. When you quit for service, you rely on God's power. You, you consider the purpose of God. Amen? Yeah. yeah, you consider his When you rely on God's service, you exemplify the love of God. In Bible study, we've been talking about uh, loving one another and loving as God wants the church to love each other. Yeah. Because when we do that, we're advertising God. Yeah. And when you don't love each other, you are bad advertisement. Amen. <laughs> and this is the advertisement for God. God said it. He said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciple. If ye have love, one another. One another. One for another. Yes. Yes. So, so we advertise God. Yes. Amen? Yes. In order to do that, you need the Holy Spirit. And you, he will give you what you need so you can be equipped right. yes. to do that. Yes. 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 When you equip for service, you magnify the grace of God. Yes. Because you know what you have. You didn't do it yourself. Yes. Yes, and you don't even deserve it. That's right. Amen. Amen. The grace of God. Yeah. When you quit for service, you declare the glory of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen. You must be quit for service because the community, the community needs someone who not only knows God by words, well, but knows God from behavior. Right. Right. You, you know what is a sad and I wish every member of this audience was in here today. Mm. But I guess the right ones are here. All right. It is a sad commentary on New Sardis. Hear me good. To have the number of active young people in this church when we are right across from our school. That's a sad commentary. Mm. Right across from a school that's fair with children. Y'all yeah. yeah. better hear me. Right. These things will meet us one of these days. Yeah. May not be the day or tomorrow, but by and by. It's a shame. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Whether you are active or not, can you say I'm telling the truth? Yeah. Amen. It's like being right across from a cornfield and you sitting up in the house stall. <laughs> There's only one gospel. Yes. Hmm? That's right. There's only one gospel. And so we so we can be equipped to do service in the marketplace on Monday. We show up at church on Sunday to get what we need in order to do what God has called us to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. huh? yeah. You see how far you can go in your car on one tank of gas. That's right. Not very far. And I dare you to keep trying to drive without pulling in. <laughs> they used to tell me that I always try to wing my car. <laughs> I used to be notorious for running out of gas. My kids tell me about it right now. I used to take them to school and I'd pick up other kids going to the same school they were going to. And sometimes them kids had to get out and push my car. 
get to the center of the station. They get gas, keep on going. You can't wean a car for gas. It's made for gas. It operates on gas. We're made for the Holy Ghost. We got to have it. We got to have the inspiration of the word. We have to have it. And so we pull in on Sunday. Yeah. You know if you miss one Sunday, Satan's all up in your face. Yes, Lord. Telling you you don't have to go, you don't need that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. There's one gospel that we preach. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But we need power to preach it. Yeah. Paul preached the word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He was equipped for the service that God called him to do. Yeah. He preached the word of divine truth. He preached the word that revealed divine revelation. He preached the word, amen, that creates and the changes of thought. Yes. The word ought to motivate you to think. That's right. Amen. Not just to come and get emotional. Yes. All right. It ought to motivate you to think. Yes. You ought to have a thought that you can focus on next week that you got from this service. That's right. Amen. 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 Hey man, if you leave out of here empty, mm. as you did when you came, you didn't meet God. Either. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. God, God ain't doing nothing in, in vain. Paul says he is a servant of, of Christ, equipped for the service of the gospel, to take the gospel to the Jews, and the Gentiles. His first challenge was to preach to the Jews. And he did that. He was a part of the Jewish family. But ultimately his call was to take the gospel to the Gentiles. But guess what? The Jews got mad. They got angry because they felt like the gospel belonged to them. Y'all do know there's such a scenario going on right now in this country. That's right. <laughs> right now in this country, there's such a scenario going on. Folk getting mad. Mm. Listen, let me drop something in your ear. This is history. Yeah. This is history. The Indians, Native Americans, were already here when we got here. But the Caucasians say we discovered America. <laughs> <laughs> now, George Washington, a long time ago, perpetuated that lie. Right. And guess what? That lie is still being. Yeah. That's right. To the extent I'm going to put up a wall. No, that's what he wants. Yeah, he want to block it. Man, you got your camera going today. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true in the house. Am I telling the truth? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Preach, Pastor. You can't discover something that I'm, I'm already I'm already discovered. Yes. Yeah. Christopher Columbus discovered America. <laughs> Children don't believe that. I know you got to write it in your essay to get a good grade, but know the truth in your heart. Yeah, that's it. Amen. That was, that was just thrown in there. <laughs> but Paul says in the text, I do what I do by the grace of God. Yeah. Yeah. Grace, 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 grace. Grace is getting something that we really don't deserve. Grace woke me up. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Grace has given me another day of living. Yeah. Grace has given us what we need, not what we want. Yeah. Grace does for us what the world can't do. That's right. Help me, Holy Ghost. Grace transforms our misunderstanding into understanding. For you see, grace is not just any old gift. Yeah. Grace is a gift from God. Amen. Something that none of us deserve. Amen. That's right. Yes. 
Stand down. God's gift of grace has great value. Yes, Not because we are all that, but because God is who he is. Yes. And thank God for his grace. Yes, sir. Paul knew, Paul knew, Paul knew. Paul knew that he didn't deserve yeah. this gift of grace, especially uh, given his track record. Paul well. had been a notorious uh, enemy toward the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, he had been. In verse 8, it says he called, he calls himself less than the least of all saints. All right. yeah. That's what he said. I'm less than least of all saints. That would never be preached in Joel Osteen's church. <laughs> but that's the word. Paul emphasizes how unworthy he is to receive the gift of God. Even grace, Corinthians 15, 9. He calls himself the least of the apostles. Now, brothers and sisters, practicalizing that and amen, concreting that for us who we are today, that's like saying, uh, a deacon would say, I'm the least of all deacons. Yeah. Yeah. A trustee saying, I'm the least of all trustees. A usher saying, I'm the least of all ushers. You get what I'm trying to say to us? Yeah. Paul had a humble spirit. Yeah. Amen. He says, I'm the least of the apostles. Yeah. And that not meant to be called, he be called an apostle. We don't even deserve to serve in God's family. Amen. Yeah. In the king, we don't deserve it. But it's grace that he allows us to function as his servant. That's a grace gift. Paul said, Paul said, I don't deserve it because I persecuted the church. I did some things against the church. Paul said, that's why I don't deserve it. But God, I, I, I've been a terrible fellow. Amen. Anybody man enough or woman enough to say that yeah. about themselves? Yeah. 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 I, I, I've been a terrible person. Yeah. I've, been a ter I've done some terrible things. Yeah. Yeah. I've had some terrible thoughts. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I've thought some things. I, I've known some places that I shouldn't have gone. I, yeah. I, I've yeah. done some things that I should not have done. Yeah. I, I've told yeah. lies. Y'all see how, 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 how far we are from the truth. Yes. 
It is why God can't use us any more than he uses us. Yes. Uh -huh. Because we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to be. Yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul, Paul says unto, the, unto me whom am the least of all saints. Yeah, I think I ought to tell you God's, God's in God's sight will nothing. That's God. right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. I ain't talking about nothing. Amen. I'm talking about in God's sight. Amen. In God's sight, we're less than nothing. Amen. That's right. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Yeah, and there's no big eyes. That's yes. right. And little you's in God's sight. That's uh -huh. right. Amen. You know, sometimes we get. I've been in church for all the years. So what? I just got here yesterday. Amen. Does that make you better in the sight of God? No. In the sight of God, we, 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 you know, ain't no big eyes and little yours. Ought to just be thankful that we in God's sight. And we count it as the worthy. He had to give that to us. Yeah. So I ask you today, are you equipped for service? All right. You gotta be lowly. lowly. You gotta be humble in your thinking yeah. about who you are and who God is. Yeah. When men come in, yeah, we stand up. When the mayor comes in, when Trump comes in, we would stand up. I don't know. <laughs> 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 and when God reveals his presence, we bow down. Yeah. We bow down to yeah. Because of who he is. So, so when Paul reveals his greatness by expressing the character of his humility, unto whom he said, the least of all the saints. And then, then Peter said in, in Acts 10, uh, 34, I believe it was. He said, God is no respecter of person. Yeah, that right there is. It's on the screen. God is no respecter of person. You may be an ambassador. You may be a man, uh, 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 the richest person in the world. You may be, you know, the most educated person in the world. You may be the socialites of socialists. You may be popular, <laughs> prestigious, and proud. Proud, proud, I shall be proud. <laughs> but in God's sight, yes. what's that song? You can build cathedrals, big or small. Y'all know that song. But only what you do for Christ is going to last. He could have bragged about his citizenship, yeah. being a Jewish citizen as well as a Roman citizen. Yeah. He could have boasted about his birthplace. Yeah. He could have boasted about his salvation experience yeah. on the road to Damascus and how God took him from there into the Arabian desert for over three years and how, how he studied the philosophy <coughs> of Zoroaster and all those great philosophers Paul was a great man. He was a great thinker. But Paul never exalted none of that stuff above who Christ was in his life. He said, I must preach Christ and him crucified. I'm a fool, he said, for Christ's sake. Only, he only bragged about the cross of Christ. Amen. Where the Son of God died that the son of men might live. Amen. I'm getting ready to close you. Know? Where the innocent blood of Jesus was shed to cleanse us all. Yeah. Yeah. Where the sins of the world was laid on the shoulders of one yeah. who knew no sin. Amen. Yeah. Am I right somebody? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Where men can come with all their troubles and find peace. Yeah. That surpasses yes. all understanding. Yes. Yes. Get me, Holy Ghost. Right. When, 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 Amen. We align ourselves right with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Like a Sunday school lesson told us this morning. 
when we surrender to God, yeah. we finally find out what his will for our lives yes, yes, yes. is. But until you surrender, you'll be doing your own thing. That's right. That's right. And you'll be running to and fro, seeking salvation, a, a, a satisfaction. Yeah. But uh, like Otis Redding said a long time ago, mm. you can't find right. no satisfaction. That's right. Until you line yourself right with Jesus. Yes. And, and, and so Paul says, I'm equipped. I'm equipped to do what God has called me to do because I'm leaning on the Lord. I'm not trusting in myself. And I'm not walking in the flesh, but I'm walking in the spirit. I'm trusting that God is going to equip me to do what he called me to do. I'm a minister of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I know some of us get minister tangled up. We, we think minister being about the preacher. Yeah. But if you look at the term in the Greek, the minister simply means servant. Yeah. 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 And all of us are servants. Yeah. Yeah. Servants of the most high God. Yeah. 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 And he's, he said unto me, uh, I say to you, brother, I am least of all the saints of God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Paul says I'm not called to by God to pass judgment on nobody. Yeah. No, no, I'm not to talk about nobody. Not, but I'm called to give them the gospel yeah. because everybody needs Jesus. Yeah. I wish y'all help me yeah. 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 Paul, Paul says I know that people are hurting. People need Jesus. Yeah. I don't care who they are. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what the background and pedigree. Yeah. Everybody needs Jesus. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. going to come up to something that they can't handle yeah. by yeah. themselves. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And they're going to need Jesus. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm preaching Jesus. Yeah. So somebody will see their need yeah. of Christ in their life. Yeah. I'm not judging any man. But I'm telling you, you need Jesus. So Paul preached uh, to the Jew, uh, but he preached to the Gentile. uh, And he got beat up uh, because the Jews thought uh, the gospel belonged to them. Uh, Paul said, uh, oh no, uh, it's not just for you, uh, but it's for the Gentile as well. I don't know about you, uh, but I'm Jesus told God. 